Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students uh, welcome to the NPTEL online course and in this module today we'll start uh, uh, with design semiotics and visual perception in the initial module we will start discussing uh, design semiotics so uh, what is semiotics semiotics is a theory of uh, science in uh, many um, uh, digital media design uh, for example web design and uh, so, uh, uh, software applications we need to understand the sign and its meaning sign just not uh, mean that it, it has to be an icon or some pictograms it can be a, a meaning of a picture how um, it interprets and uh, how user uh, with the con uh, with uh, their social and uh, cultural background how they interpret the meaning so today we'll start discussing that so uh, we'll just uh, brief the uh, what we'll touch when, uh, within semiotics because it's a uh, uh, complete domain we'll not go in deep into this uh, so we'll just discuss uh, the theory of semiotics and then uh, uh, what are the divisions of semiotics are syntax semantics and pragmatics and uh, we'll again uh, go uh, deep into the syntax what are the divisions of syntax how uh, the syntax or the formation of a uh, meaning happen uh, or the structure of the meaning happen and uh, then semantics what is the meaning and how it has been interpreted and the pragmatics what is the functional part of the uh, s sign what is the communication happening uh, within the user and the signages that we'll discuss so uh, to start with so uh, semiotics is a learning and uh, various ways that designers can empower meaning and motivation by uh, the visual choices for example we can take uh, the example of a web uh, website there uh, with the words there also uh, will be logos for example uh, here you can see the home button we all know that this is a home button of a web, uh, website otherwise uh, if some people doesn't know if not uh, associated with the uh, web application or have not seen might not be uh, interpreting this as a home page of a website because this so uh, shows as a just as a um, uh, icon of a home even the second uh, icon what uh, we can see is a uh, uh, denote settings uh, but this has nothing to do with settings because this is just some uh, gears uh, associated with that because we are preconceived and uh, we have that preconceived idea of this uh, will denote uh, settings so that we know so how uh, people uh, interpret these images and how uh, what kind of communication happens uh, within this um, icons and users mind that uh, comes under semiotic analysis and semiology so we uh, can say the semiotics is a science of science and it is the science of it is also the science behind the graphic design so in design semiotics is a study of communication through signs and symbols and their uses and interpretation and the meaning so here we can see that uh, it can be depicted to, uh, through a word for example in the first uh, in the diagram you can see there's a first uh, here it's uh, written tree so that also uh, when we read the word if uh, somebody knows the language in which it is written uh, so uh, so that a uh, uh, visual image of a tree comes into uh, people's mind and similarly if we see a pictogram or icon or a realistic picture of a tree but which is a picture not a um, 2d uh, picture or painting or photograph then also a tree's uh, identity a tree's uh, conception of the mental model of a uh, uh, of a tree will come into user's mind so uh, that this is the um, 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 initial idea of uh, semiotics we'll go deep into this so for a example um, fedex logo we can take that fedex logo it's a typographic logo it's just written fedex but there is a interesting uh, visual graphics into it so if we uh, see carefully there's a arrow uh, symbol coming out with a figure ground relationship so arrow, uh, arrow symbol means that it's uh, it's something to do with uh, movement and something to do with delivery so that is the concept of the fedex and this 
comes into user's mind and uh, if somebody is associated with that and gives the uh, brand identity of a FedEx. And it can also be very universal, for example, danger, the sign, uh, sign of danger. There's generally, we see that um, it's depicted with red, which is the color of danger, which is associated with the um, word danger and even we see that uh, the skull and the bones which also uh, evokes a sensation of fear. So if we go back to the historic backdrop, so it starts uh, the semiotics uh, uh, is uh, started with a very ancient time. Uh, we can uh, trace back to the uh, Plato's time. But uh, Ferdinand de Saussure is the uh, father of the modern semiotics idea and the uh, he developed the co concept of semiotics in the contemporary um, idea of semiotics. So, um, and uh, if we uh, think about semiotics, it is not just the uh, meaning, it can be, uh, it can go beyond the meaning and it can have a sense, it can touch to our senses like it can, it can uh, be a visual sensation, it can be a sound, touch or smell or taste. So all these things uh, comes into uh, uh, semiotics and after that, uh, we have Charles uh, Peirce, uh, Charles Saunders Peirce, who also in, uh, takes that uh, semiotics meaning into the con uh, sociocultural context. So before that, it was like uh, what we are seeing and what is the interpretation. And the Charles uh, Peirce said that it's also uh, how we uh, read it. So similar thing, uh, similar. Um, word can mean differently, uh, uh, can communicate differently with the um, uh, variation of soci uh, sociocultural uh, aspects. And also if you are uh, more interested about semiotics, there are uh, Levi-Strauss um, and um, Levi-Strauss theory and Jake Derrida, you can uh, read their um, theories if you, are, uh, if you want to go deep into the uh, subject. So uh, first we uh, discuss the theory of saucers. So what he says, he connotes uh, two uh, important terminology. One is uh, the signifier and one is the signified. So uh, the way he defines signifier is uh, which is the material, uh, the thing that, si uh, that signifies. For example, the word, uh, in the previous slide we uh, discussed the word uh, tree as well as the photograph or the icons of tree which signifies. So uh, that is not the exact thing what comes into people's uh, or user's mind if we think about the mental uh, image of uh, what users think. So it is just a word, you have to see the word or you, you can um, see the image. After that, uh, some um, based on your previous knowledge, some something comes into your mind. That is a signified. So here the signified is actually the real tree and signified is the word or image or uh, pictogram, uh, whatever, uh, what triggers your uh, memory. So for example, with an example um, of uh, this, we can understand this more. So sign has two parts, one is a signified and signifier. Here we are taking an example of a flower, this is a Van Gogh's painting. So flower, the word flower is actually the signifier, which signifies and if you uh, read the word flower or see a uh, icon of a flower or a real photograph of a, a, a flower, something comes into your mind that is the image of the real ex uh, existence of that uh, flower, what you have seen before. So next we come to the uh, Pierce's theory. So Pierce added one third element that is interpretant. So interpretant is uh, not the user but the uh, way the user's mind acts. So it is, uh, it is a function of their sociocultural aspects. So if somebody is, uh, has a preconceived idea about what uh, it is, uh, then he uh, can interpret it in, in a different way. For, uh, for example, if uh, somebody is um, more associated um, with the, uh, if we uh, take the word uh, flower, if uh, somebody has more association with uh, some particular kind of flower, for, uh, for example, sunflower, he can think about um, a sunflower. When uh, he thinks, uh, reads the word flower, he can think about a particular kind of flower which has a strong memory in his mind. 
or example, um, uh, if somebody has a strong memory of some other kind of flower, for example, rose, uh, he can think about rose. But that depends on its um, uh, on the user's preconceived idea and the past history, how he is associated with that. So there is a sociocultural concept associated with the uh, meaning. So, uh, for example, uh, in um, some cultural uh, aspect, uh, if we take the word uh, sorrow. Some in some um, sociocultural context, it can be depicted with white, and in some sociocultural con uh, context, it can be even depicted by black. So, whether a black color represents uh, sorrow or the white color represents uh, sorrow uh, depends on the uh, on somebody's uh, sociocultural context and somebody's uh, own thinking. So there is a triangle. So one is the object, which is the sing a signifier. So that is a re real object, and the uh, representation that is the signified, the how it has um, has been represented. It can be a photograph, it can be an icon, it can be just a word, and interpret and how uh, people are reading uh, reading the sign based on their sociocultural context and based on their past memory. So we uh, can take uh, different examples. For example, uh, we can uh, have a real um, photograph of something, and uh, for example, champagne. It can um, so that is the real object of a glass of wine that represents uh, this uh, this um, uh, champagne or wine. And uh, somebody uh, can think about uh, wine um, as a celebration. Somebody can think about wine as a uh, ceremony and wine as a happy hour. It depends on the, somebody's association with the uh, image. Even it can uh, a photograph of a Labrador can be uh, some for somebody it's just a Labrador, and uh, for somebody who has a pet can be uh, it, it can be a family pet, and it depends on how uh, people look at uh, look at um, um, to the image. Similarly, the stop sign uh, it doesn't uh, 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 depend on what kind of uh, language uh, in which language it is uh, written uh, so the red bold color for some uh, some uh, somebody it uh, directly gives you an uh, uh, sensation of that has to be a stop sign and also uh, for somebody there uh, the word triggers for example uh, it's re uh, the stop sign is uh, written in different languages so uh, somebody reads that and understands that's a stop sign uh, for example, if uh, in the in the pre uh, first slide we were giving the example of home button, so imagine a uh, website which has a home button, which uh, has the home icon, and also the home uh, home page written there. So who uh, can read the language? Can read that's the home page of the website, and who cannot read and um, reads uh, interprets visually can look at the home icon and understand that's the home icon. So semiotics has uh, three different uh, divisions. We can um, break down uh, the semiotics and concept of semiotics into uh, three different aspects. One is the syntax, and the second is the semantics, and then the pragmatics. Syntax is the arrangement, how it has, um, how um, all the pictures are associated, and uh, structured. It can be structured. It might not be structured. It can be an association. It can be a set of uh, some pictures, which means something else, or it can be logically sequenced, which means something else. So that we'll discuss. That is the, that comes within the syntax. So what is the formation of the uh, uh, pic uh, pictures or icons or the images or the signs, and uh, whether it depends uh, on the some particular uh, set of arrangement or uh, it's independent of some uh, some particular set of arrangement, uh, that comes in the syntax. So this is the hardware part or the formation and the structure structural part of the uh, communication of um, signs. So uh, th that is the syntax. After syntax, the next part is semantics. So semantics is the uh, meaning part of it. So it's a, a language software which creates the meaning. So, uh, but it is not the way uh, user interprets. It's the way uh, the designers have thought about it. So it's the I icons and the all the possible meaning associated with that. So that part is semantics, and then. We have the pragmatics. Pragmatics is the uh, relationship between the sign, 
with its syntax and everything and the semantics the meaning associated with that and here comes the uh, sociocultural effect because here the user's mind is involved. So, it, uh, for each and every people the uh, pragmatics can be a little different the way, uh, because this is the functional part the function and the context uh, of the user is uh, important as McCoy said. So, uh, here um, the meaning can be diverse based on user's mind. So, pragmatics is a study of the way in which signs are used and interpreted, the context in which language is used and functions of language. Uh, for example, the uh, everyday way we um, uh, look at the word and the image and their communication that is a uh, is a part of the pragmatics and that affects the uh, meaning uh, that affects uh, even the uh, semantics part of the uh, of a, of a sign. So, uh, basically how we um, how our icon functions and how we interpret that that is the pragmatic part. So, first part is the arrangement of uh, the um, icons and everything that is the syntactual part and each uh, uh, a syntactual or the um, formation of the of the uh, of the design or everything and then the meaning part of it is the semantics and the interpretation uh, that is the pragmatics. So, uh, now we will discuss first we will discuss the semantics uh, how uh, the semantics are um, uh, what is the different uh, different uh, aspects of semantics then we will uh, uh, also discuss the uh, pragmatics and the syntax part later. So, in semantics we have icon index and symbol they are they are, they are little different. So, icon is a physical uh, resemblance of an object or concept it can be very realistic and uh, it can be a map it can be a diagram and easily understood. So, there is no hidden um, layer into it. For example, uh, this is a famous painting uh, we must have seen that this is a pipe, but uh, it is a painting of a pipe. So, it is also written that this is not a pipe, this is a painting of a pipe, but still this is a photograph and this reminds us of a pipe. So, uh, so, it can be as realistic uh, as possible or it can also be abstract, but it is e easily understandable. So, if, if you want to uh, make an abstract uh, abstraction of uh, this um, of a pipe, it can be a shillet of a pipe, but still it should not be something metaphorical, something which um, uh, which is not a pipe, but gives us a sensation of pipe that should not be uh, that should not be the case. It has to be represented as directly as possible. So, that is the icon. Then uh, this is the in uh, the next thing is indexed which does not convey the meaning directly which gives us some uh, sensation and there is a cause and effect um, uh, related to it. For example, uh, we were discussing the danger uh, sign. So, it is uh, it is if we look at the danger sign it is just a skull and uh, there are two bones. So, this, that, that is nothing to uh, directly uh, do with danger. So, it is a skull. So, if uh, we uh, look at the icon part of it, so that represents a skull that does not represent danger, but with the red color and with the bone and with our previous association with the meaning uh, it conveys it uh, represents uh, danger. For example, if we um, paint a heavy uh, cloud it can uh, represent uh, rain because that is the uh, cause of uh, heavy cloud is a cause of uh, rain and uh, so on so forth. For, uh, for he uh, here we have an example of uh, Munch, uh, Munch's cream. So, here because of the color selection because of the uh, line quality and because of the expression uh, the person is uh, given. Uh, so, uh, that is why the expression of scream is well depicted. So, it is the word scream is not written and the uh, our interpretation of scream is also very abstract. So, because through the color, through the line quality and uh, through the brush uh, strokes and through the expression if you look at uh, the uh, people uh, the persons the uh, the pa uh, painted person's expression it almost resembles like uh, uh, he is horrified and he has the similar um, has a lot of similarity with a sculled uh, face. So, uh, all these things together evokes a sensation of scream that can be uh, caused as in index which is not as direct as icon. There is another thing which is symbol which is not directly linked as index like uh, for index it is a cause and effect uh, relationship, but for symbol it is a 
it's a predefined symbol. For example, a uh, symbol is a learned and agreed upon code. Uh, here we have a WWF's um, uh, advertisement. Here we see there is a whale's tail because we have already um, have a particular idea of whale uh, whale's tail's um, shape. So this uh, the the two different hands uh, two hands uh, gives a formation of whale's tail. So whale's tail has a particular um, shape, and we also we had a that, that's an agreed upon code because we also uh, we have uh, that in our uh, mind so we all know that so because it uh, creates a similar uh, formation we that's that's a, a symbol uh, for example we can uh, think about the symbol of a flight uh, departure flight arrival or elevator and um, uh, even the home button so everybody agreed upon that uh, particular code of um, um, uh, code or particular symbol. For example, the uh, WWF's uh, logo is definitely a symbol. But here, the uh, difference between index and symbol is this particular index is not a agreed upon code because it's um, uh, the moon, uh, the painter Munch, uh, Munch's creation. So he have depicted um, scream with different um, uh, with color. Um, different uh, kind of uh, brush strokes. It can be depicted differently as well. But for symbol, it's more universal and um, uh, throughout the sociocultural context, uh, different uh, people from different sociocultural context will agree on the symbol and uh, will understand the symbol um, easily. So we can conclude that symbol will be. Uh, based on uh, a symbol will not be based on sociocultural context and uh, most most of the people will agree on the uh, symbols identity and it will be more universal but index is more fluid and uh, it will be uh, represented and some uh, uh, will represent some other kind of secondary or hidden meaning in, um, uh, uh, meaning uh, for it so thank you and uh, next we'll discuss uh, the later part um, pragmatics and syntax.